Welcome back to Tutorial Tidbits and welcome to my channel. I'm Elizabeth St. Hilaire and this week I have more ideas for you to create beautiful backgrounds for your own mixed media projects with my brand new mixed media backgrounds rice papers. These rice papers are printed in Italy. They are in neutral colors, but I'm going to show you this week how to give them some bling and make them more colorful and more iridescent and to provide the base for what I hope to be three new hummingbird collages. So if you've got a few minutes, let's go check it out. Welcome back to the studio. So this week I've got some more ideas for how you can use my mixed media background rice papers as a base for your own projects. So I've got a couple of cradled panels here and I'm working with my A10 sheets of beautiful printed rice papers from joggles.com. These rice papers are 30 GSM. They're really nice and thin, so they glue down really flat. The paper just melts into the glue and you don't get any bubbles or buckles in your backgrounds. So the first one I wanna show you is that I did this on an eight by eight on a two inch cradled board. And I went around the edge of the cradle with my own postage stamps. And you can get these vintage postage postage stamps off paper that means they're steamed off the envelopes from joggles and they make a great edge to this postage sort of themed mixed media background on the front and i love that okay the second way that we can do the edge is you can wrap the rice paper itself whoops knocking everything over here you can wrap the rice paper itself around the edge so for this one i just cut the rice paper into strips and glued it around the edges and i'll put a piece on the front as well so and then lastly for this one this is only a one inch deep panel you can see my edge is still wet but the third option is obviously to paint it i just painted this in a neutral color but you could also pick up a color from the front or a color from your ultimate artwork to finish the edges so that's three different edge treatments with the that are um, compatible and really go nicely with the rice paper so I designed these papers neutral so that you could put your colorful bird or flower subject on it and these do not compete with that. But you can also tint these in several different ways in order to make them more uh, geared towards your project or if you are not um, wanting to leave it with the whole neutral. So the first thing I want to show you is I want, I'm going to put a hummingbird on this 8x8 with the stamp postage stamp edges. I love to use birds with postage themes. So the first thing I'm going to show you is that I'm going to use uh, some of the dragonfly glaze. So these dragonfly glazes by folk art are sort of like iridescent color shifts. They're clear, but they have a iridescent color shift. And I thought this would be a beautiful way to tint the mixed media rice paper so that it goes with that iridescent sort of feeling of the hummingbird. So the more coats of this you put on, the obviously more enriched the effect gets. So I, for this, will layer the paper right onto the board and then I'll brush the paint on top of it and I'll put on enough coats until I'm happy with the way that it looks. So for this one, I think I'm gonna go with the um, violet blue green shift and I'm just gonna squeeze it out onto the panel and then I'm gonna take a paintbrush and just layer it. I probably could have put out a little less, maybe not. Um, so again, you can see that this is clear, but it is gonna tint the rice paper and give it just like a shimmer of that color shift. And I think that's gonna make, will stay relatively neutral in the background, but will give the hummingbird an iridescent base um, that will be just a little bit more interesting. And you can see that starting to shift there, um, a little bit more interesting than just the straightforward, but we're still staying neutral. So we'll let this dry and see what it looks like. And we may add another coat or more. That's gonna depend on how much of the effect you want on your board. But you can see that that's a nice way to tint the rice paper with an iridescent shift without a lot of color, okay? So we're gonna set that over here 
and see if we need another color. And like I said, the dragonfly glazes are great for that. They've got lots of different color shift colors and they really make a beautiful shimmery background. So for this one, where I put the paper around the edges, I wanna show you that you can gel print these sheets of rice paper and add an immediate full flood of a different color. So for this one, I'm gonna use green gold because green gold will give me a nice kind of a pale yellowish green background. It's a highly translucent color, so I'll still see all the graphics through it, but I'll take this from neutral shade to a colorful shade. So I'm gonna put out golden fluid acrylics green gold onto the gel plate. I'm going to roll that out with my six inch brayer. And this is my eight by 10 plate. And I'm just going to put the rice paper down into the paint. And the benefit of this is that it's going to be a nice thin, even layer. It's going to be almost dry, if not dry immediately when you pull it up off the plate like that. And you see, we've now created a green tint of that whole background. So it's quite the difference from the neutral to the green. So let's do that one more time. I'm gonna pick up the extra paint on this because I'd also like to see it in a pale manganese blue. So let's try that. I like manganese blue as much as I like the green gold for the translucency. So we'll grab this sheet of the rice paper. We'll put out the manganese blue. I'm gonna make sure I grab a different brayer so I don't get any green in my blue. We'll lay out a nice thin layer. And again, taking the rice paper and pressing it into that color and we'll quickly and completely change the look of this neutral mixed media background paper, creating something in a beautiful, vibrant blue. Look at that. It's a whole different thing now with the color. So, and we could take it one step further and we could do the dragonfly glaze right on this also on the gel plate. So for this one, let's do on the green one, let's try the green dragonfly glaze. So we're just gonna do the same thing like we would with paint. We'll just squeeze it out on the plate and I got a little blue in my brayer there so I'm gonna swirl it all around, blend it all up, the dragonfly fly glaze and the blue. And you could also brush it on, but I'm just going for a quick, even pass here. So I'll take that green and we can add a shimmer to it right on the gel plate. So here you can see it's got that glittery shimmer, but because it's a clear paint, we're still going to have everything showing through from the mixed media background rice paper. So I'm really loving that. All right. Let this dry and let's have a look at our first glaze with the blue. It's still wet. Oh, it's almost pretty dry actually, but you can really see that blue glaze tint and how it's really going to set the stage for a beautiful hummingbird, but keeping the uh, base pretty neutral. So for the one that I painted the edges of, for this one, I added, um, in a previous lesson, I added some uh, gold uh, tissue and some stamps of my own on top of the rice paper. So I made this, I created this into my own look by adding a little bit of tissue with metallic elements and my own stamps to the top of it. So that takes this, this rice paper and makes it look a little bit different. But what I'd like to do with this one is try some golden interference gold paint. So golden interference paints are gonna be similar to the dragonfly glazes in that they're clear, but they, when you tip them to the edge, you get that iridescent effect. They're gonna be stronger and more intense than the dragonfly glazes, and they're gonna have a more intense effect with less layers. Um, so let's put a little bit of this out. You're gonna see this is really gonna lighten up what we've got going on back here. 
I think I need a little water. So if I just dip my brush in a little water, I can move this around a little bit better. And this is just going to tone back sort of everything on the board. It'll, it'll, cause it's a little bit opaque when you angle it. So it's very similar to the dragonfly glaze, but you can see that in just one coat, we're getting a, a really strong effect and different colors are going to give you a different effect as well. But what I'm doing with this gold is I'm going to make an iridescent tint to this. And I'm also going to subdue the image slightly with the gold. So this tones back my background, makes it a little more subtle and gives it that gold effect. So those are a few different ways that you can change and use this rice paper for a base for your artwork project. So painting the dragonfly glaze directly on the board once it's glued down, painting the golden interference on the board once it's glued down, and gel printing the papers before they're glued down, gel printing with paint and also gel printing with, you could either do it with the dragonfly glaze or the golden interference. So I'm going to show you now how I'm going to take this one and put it on the front here to create my background from a gel printed. This way you can gel print a few sheets of paper, make sure you get it to the color and the exact way that you want it and then glue it down. So I'm going to use this um, small self healing cutting mat and I'm going to use my gel medium. I've got a larger size Princeton Catalyst brush here for the bigger piece of paper. Same material as my favorite glue brush, the number eight Filbert, but this is a larger flat so I can spread it faster. This rice paper is so highly absorbent that it doesn't even require you to add glue over the top of it. It just lays nice and flat just by, uh, with the glue underneath. Okay. So I want to make sure I get this centered in my blue area. I'm going to slide this around where I want it. Okay. And then we're just going to take the, a new blade and flip it upside down onto the cut mat. and trim the excess off. We'll trim that. And if you are not in a hurry, it's probably best to wait until the glue dries before you trim it. But in the interest of demonstrating, I'm cutting it while it's wet. It's a little less likely to pull if you do it when it's dry. So we've got a little bit of an edge here that's not completely covered. You could increase the size of your gel plate to the nine by 11. I don't actually mind that. It's kind of neat. Um, but yeah, so this is an eight by eight, but the gel plate being also eight inches, um, if it's, if it's at all misshapen on the edges or shrunk a little bit, like they do sometimes you're a little short. So you could also do this on the nine by 12 or the nine by 11 plate. Okay. So now I've got the edges, with the lighter rice paper that I wrapped and I've got this beautiful blue base for my hummingbird. I'm feeling like this is probably a little dark though uh, for my hummingbird to stand out on. So I think that what I'm gonna do with this one as well is either put the dragonfly glaze on it or the golden interference. So let's try the, the, um, Let's try the golden interference. Uh, no, let's try the dragonfly glaze. Um, let's do it in the same color. So the blue purple, and we'll put that on here and this will give it that little glow for the hummingbird. And it should also lighten it up and tone things back a little bit. So we'll spread that out.
and we're getting a nice sort of more subdued, subtle, glimmery background with adding the dragonfly glaze. It's toning back the graphics a little bit. It's toning back the blue a little bit, and we're getting this real pretty kind of iridescent background that now has all the mixed media effects of all the old postage stamps and the old letters without you having to collect all that material to build your own background. So this, uh, these um, options for tinting the rice paper, I hope you find inspiring. And then we got another one here. And then what I will do is create hummingbirds on all three different backgrounds. Thank you so much for being with me here this week for um, exploring the ways that you can be even more creative with my new rice papers from Joggles. If you're interested in seeing lessons like how I put birds on top of neutral mixed media backgrounds, come on over and check me out on Patreon. Patreon is a month to month subscription. You get a video tutorial every week, plus you have immediate access to all archived video material that goes all the way back to May of 2020. So it is like multiple workshops a month for $25, unless you want to upgrade to the original art collector tier. Just a thought. Anyway, thanks for being here. Check me out on Patreon and I'll see you back here next week.